RTX 5050 is here. DDR4 prices are being jacked up and Intel finally looking to get into the 3D Vcash game. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Friday, June 27th, 2025. We're gonna start off today talking about an announcement that happened a couple days ago, but we haven't been doing hot news, and that is the RTX 5050 unveiling by NVIDIA. Now, this is both on desktop and laptop versions with them having slight disparities in terms of what they can accomplish. Allegedly, RTX 5050 laptops are supposed to start at roughly $1,000, whereas the RTX 5050 desktop card is supposed to start at $249. And it looks like there's probably not going to be a Founders Edition for this, only third-party cards, but it does have roughly the same amount of CUDA cores as the previous RTX 3050, which is 2560 but the improvements are coming in way of clock speed and architectural improvements with the 50 series outpacing the 30 series and there not being an RTX 4050 that was unveiled. The main difference between the desktop and laptop versions of this card happened to be in the VRAM side of things. The laptop has GDDR7, whereas the desktop version has GDDR6. Now there's been some communication to NVIDIA asking them why would they make this difference between the two GPUs? Wouldn't that make the laptop faster than the, the desktop? And it turns out, at least according to NVIDIA, it really shouldn't have that much of an impact. The actual performance of the 5050 is kind of too slow to take advantage of GDDR7. So the reason they did that on mobile is for the battery life enhancements because GDDR7 is more power efficient, requires lower voltage. So it's going to save battery when it's placed in a laptop, whereas on the desktop, you actually don't need to do that. And all it would potentially do is raise the price of the graphics card. And with it being only $50 less than the RTX 5060, it's a weird value proposition there. You can get 5060s for quite close to that $300 price point. You get nearly 1300 more CUDA cores. You get GDDR7 memory, which bumps you up roughly 120 gigabytes per second in memory bandwidth. You're not really losing out on a whole lot by upgrading the 5060. It does look like the 5050 is there to make the 5060 look like a better value. NVIDIA obviously putting out their garbage charts showing that you can get four times frame rate with DLSS4 and frame generation and all that stuff. And it blows the 3050 out of the water. When you look at the games that don't require that, which they have Apex Legends, CS2 and Overwatch 2, it is a decent step up over the 3050. It's not necessarily worth upgrading if you already have a 3050 unless you really want that. But if you're looking for NVIDIA's cheapest, brandest, newest graphics card, the 5050 is likely going to be it. Let me know what you think of the RTX 5050 down below in the comments while I let you know what I think about today's video sponsor, Falcon Northwest, which is a lot. We've been working with Falcon Northwest for several years and they've been in the industry for many more several years than that with them starting over 30 years ago and staying in the business due to number one, their reputation. Number two, the reason they got the reputation, which is the high quality of their builds as well as their fantastic customer support. Because if you buy any one of the Falcon Northwest PCs that are out there, whether that be the Tiki small mini tower, the frag box portable one, or the Talon big boy that can support up to a Threadripper workstation, you're going to have a great PC that not only has the parts in it that you need, like the Tiki going up to a 5090, despite its diminutive status, you can also get great artwork put onto the PC, whether that's the custom liveries that we've seen for things like our Syngap Research Fund, fundraisers that we've done here on UFD Tech, or potentially even the Oblivion giveaways that they've done, or the Doom giveaways that they've done. Or we have the Assassin's Creed Shadows PC that we facilitate the giveaway with in collaboration with Falcon Northwest. So you get great parts. You get great build quality, you get great looking, but you also get great customer service, which with the first year of purchasing a Falcon Northwest PC, you get one year of overnight door-to-door -door service in terms of making sure that your PC is functional, ready to go in case there's any issues, as well as just a three-year general warranty on the computer. Falcon Northwest has been long-lasting because they support the community, both with upholding their products, making sure that they respect their customers and give them the support that they need, but also just being around in the community and trying to help solve problems like the RTX 5090 power issue, the 13th, 14th gen instability. Falcon Northwest was at the forefront of testing their stuff 
in-house so that they could let their customers know what to be concerned with, what to potentially change in their BIOS when it came to the Intel stuff. And they did that without necessarily waiting for Intel and NVIDIA to tell them, oh, hey, here's the issue because Falcon Northwest likes to be proactive, making sure that you're taken care of as a customer. And if you wanna be a customer, check them out at the link in the video description. You can pick up any number of their PCs. You wanna pick up more than one, you're welcome to do that. Check out Falcon Northwest down below in the comments. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. But with a Falcon Northwest PC, you might think, hey, if I get Windows, I'm gonna get a blue screen of death eventually, right? That's just how Windows works, regardless of how well-built a PC is. Wrong, turns out that moving forward, the BSOD is gonna stand for black screen of death. This is something that we have kind of known, been has been worked on in the background. It's been in the beta builds of Windows 11 for quite some time, but now it looks like Microsoft is making official that the blue screen of deaths is just gonna move on to something that's supposed to be a little bit more helpful. So the screen is supposed to be black and you should now get a better message to let you know exactly what's going on, the driver that crashed and the process that caused it and allegedly supposed to be a bit more simple in terms of making sure that you know why your computer went down instead of the QR code and non-helpful frowny face that was there. I think this is losing a little bit of its whimsy. I think this is a little too corporate. I. Uh, appreciated the blue screen of death because it just seemed fun. It seemed like a fun little way for your computer to go out. And now this seems a bit more clinical and sterile, which uh, appears to be the way of many industries moving forward. But also with Windows 10 moving forward, people are gonna lose the security updates unless you wanted to upgrade that for free. Extended security updates are coming out for Windows 10 for no dollar cost to you, with Microsoft announcing that if you're part of the Microsoft Rewards program, for a thousand of those points, you can get ESU on Windows 10. Now you might be wondering, how do you get Microsoft Rewards points? Because I have not participated in this. It's not something that I actively do, but it's not terrible. You just have to bing. You have to be binging to get that because that's one of the main ways people get rewards points is by searching with Bing. And I've heard a lot of people Bing specifically for the points for redemption. You also might have to edge with Microsoft as well as uh, potentially everything you buy on Microsoft Store and Xbox helps to count towards rewards points. So there's ways to do it where you don't have to spend the actual $30 cash to get the ESU for the Windows 10, but you could uh, potentially do it with just a couple Bings. Actually, I don't know what the ratio to Bing and reward points is, but uh, hopefully it doesn't consume your life. And I hope this next launch from AMD doesn't consume your life because we're getting understanding of the Gorgon Point APUs that are supposed to be coming out from them, the Ryzen AI 400 series APUs that are gonna be likely rolling out to both laptops as well as potentially mobile handhelds moving forward. And it appears to be a uh, bit of a small upgrade. You get Zen 5 CPU up to 12 cores, the GPU is roughly gonna stay the same on all of these going up to the HX 470. It looks like the main difference here is gonna potentially be clock speed because they have to have a yearly release for laptops. It's just kind of required by OEMs sometimes. And so this is a bit of a, not much to look at here, especially there's no Gorgon Halo that we uh, are expecting at the current moment. They're using the same CPU architecture, the same GPU architecture, and it appears to be the same NPU architecture. It's just they're squeezing using a little bit more clock speed out of things like the HX470 versus the HX370, but they will be releasing at some point in the near future. And let's see if Reese is releasing deals for you today because uh, it's been a weird, weird week. So I don't know uh, how, how well he's keeping up with the deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's me, it's Catlin, hey. Here's the deal. Starting off today, we have this Corsair IQ 4000X mid-tower ATX case, which is available in white and comes bundled with three of their fans, available for only $86.99, making it $58 off. And then next, we have the Keychron K2 Pro, 75% wireless, hot swappable mechanical keyboard, going for only $91.99, making it $23, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous looking. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, turns out the people who were looking for DDR4 RAM might be coming to you for more RAM deals sometime soon because the prices on those bad boys have been escalating to the point that DDR4 is now more expensive than DDR5 for the first time ever. And one of the reasons for this is that the price of DDR4 is skyrocketing, not the fact that DDR5 is dropping so dramatically in price. DDR5 has come down in its price point, but DDR4 is kind of looking at a surge in pricing, which according to Tom's hardware at least, 
taste, and I, I agree with them just from a remembrance standpoint that uh, typically RAM does not get more expensive as it's being replaced by its new successor. DDR3 did not become more expensive than DDR4 during that transition. I don't remember DDR2 to DDR3 becoming that much more expensive, uh, just like has been happening. But allegedly the reason for this is that all of the companies who make DDR4 are backing out. Micron announcing that they're getting out of the game. Samsung has already announced that they've decided to move on to DDR5 and HBM. And so it's making it so that there are fewer players in the DDR4 game, which is allowing them to increase the pricing because the supply is just going down. But a lot of people still want DDR4 and it's making it so that supply, demand, economics, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more for it. But while DDR4 is uh, on its way out, so are a plethora of Intel employees. We've already talked about how Intel is looking at replacing its marketing segment with Accenture and their AI to just somehow uh, do a better job, I guess, make people want to buy Intel by using AI. I don't see that biting them in the butt whatsoever. We've also talked about how they were laying off a significant portion of their foundry employees. And now reports are that their automotive chip division is getting axed and being removed. And that's going to lead to the job loss of hundreds of engineers on that side, as well as a few other engineers outside of the automotive division are getting their jobs taken away as well. So it appears that the new CEO of Intel is sticking to his plan of clearing house changing out management teams that are viewed as just redundant, getting rid of engineering staff that doesn't appear to be bringing in the big dollars, such as things in the automotive side, and then also clearing house on the marketing side. There was also a recent interview with the previous CEO, Pat Gelsinger, who kind of confirmed suspicions that he was forced out of the role despite his strategy actually being sound and quite honestly effective from an outsider's point of view. They just have not capitalized on the AI side of things, but he was getting them on track for things like their new nanometer productions, the, the 18A stuff that they've been trying to put out. He's always been upfront about how long his strategy would take, but it appears that shareholders and the executive team did not want to wait that long. And so now they need to make rash decisions and quick moves in order to get their stock price back up rather than making decisions that were potentially going to be better in the long run. But that doesn't appear to be the case when it comes to their upcoming Nova Lake CPUs. It appears that there's been some movement in behind the scenes that is making it so that this could potentially be a return to form for Intel in at least on the gaming side of things. We've already talked about how this they could potentially go up to 52 cores in total uh, capacity for allowing you to do whatever you want. But now reports are coming in that there might even be a 3D V-cache type of thing coming out on some of the Nova Lake chips with well-known leakers indicating that they are going to have something known as BLLC or stands for last line cache, similar to something like the 3D V cache where they're just increasing the total amount of cache, the gaming cache, which allows for better frame rate just because it enables lower latency connection to the CPU versus having to push things over to RAM. And the BLLC, which is typically found on their server chips right now is supposed to be part of the tile interconnect, which allows Intel to have it as a foundational layer of their CPUs and effectively make it more useful than how they would have potentially boosted up their L3 cache on the current setup because they currently use ring buses still instead of the direct core interconnects that AMD has. So it's not likely to be a complete one-to-one, -one, but it does appear like it's going to be analogous. And if Intel does it right, we could potentially see a huge boost to gaming performance on Intel's chips. They just need to get the price point making more sense for a lot lot of people and the power draw. I don't know how you get an effective power draw on 52 cords. We'll have to see if they can. And we'll have to see what you guys said on the last episode of Hot News. And we got Gonnery Leggy saying, so you were 100% right. Streetlight album was delayed until the fall. They did release three of the new songs on YouTube today though. Yeah, yeah, I uh, am not shocked that uh, Mr. Thomas Conolke decided that uh, he couldn't get the album out in time, despite the fact that nobody was pressuring him for a June 24th release date. He decided that he was gonna do that. I listened to the three songs. 
not uh, not excited. The mix is garbage. I'm not one of those fans who will just fawn over uh, incomplete work because I've been desperate to hear them for the last 13 years. I'll just go listen to the old stuff. If you listen to uh, the older albums versus the new mixes, it's clear that <laughs> they are not ready to be released and uh, I'd rather wait until they're done to listen to those things again because Oh boy, I did not enjoy it. Like I can't even appreciate the music. I can't even appreciate what they're trying to do just because the, the mix is so bad. I've heard people say, oh, you should listen to it on YouTube music versus the YouTube videos. I did that, didn't, didn't help. I, it is higher quality mush. That is all I got out of listening to it on YouTube music. So I'll, I'll wait till the mixes are finally done. And if this is indicative of the final quality, I don't think I'm gonna enjoy the, the new album I died. Maybe they needed a more supportive record label to get, the, get somebody who's better crafted at mastering and mixing. I don't know, that's my personal opinion. What's going on there? I've read through the subreddit for Streetlight Manifesto. There's plenty of people who disagree with me and that's okay. That's okay. It's a subjective take, it's personal. Uh, my earballs don't like to get tickled the way that they got tickled by those songs. And then we got Wright and Belmont saying, my wife works in marketing. Big Kahuna thought it was a good idea to replace her with AI. Six months later, there's three positions available for the marketing department to do what she did alone with Garbage Bay. You can't replace skill and experience with unsupervised AI. Nuh-uh. I can save money allegedly. And maybe I'm just putting those marketing positions out there to uh, make you feel like I, I uh, didn't do the right thing, but I did. I did, AI was promised to fix things, despite the fact that it's not uh, intelligent in the slightest, and it's just a probability guesser, and it's just, uh, you know, just, it's just matrix multiplication math on tensor cores, you know, just it's, it's, despite the fact that it's it's actually not uh, sentient and it uh, it's just marketing that makes people think that it's artificial intelligence. You're uh, incorrect. I, I, as a CEO, have done good things by getting rid of people. All right, well, anyways, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News here. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. It's 5 a.m. I came in to work early to film this because life's been crazy lately. I'll see you back here for more of the Hot Tech News sometimes next, next week, hopefully. We'll see.